Hello, everyone. Hello, Brigitte. And hello, Cyril. Now, we've already talked this morning about uh, the uh, everything sustainable approach, of which the environment is one of the three uh, pillars. Cyril, what are the biggest challenges uh, facing the group in this area? Well, for over 30 years, the Michelin Group has been committed to reducing its environmental impact by conducting its operations in an exemplary manner, but also by design, designing uh, ever more innovative products, uh, services, and solutions to contribute to the progress of sustainable mobility. The environmental challenges are multiplying today, especially for our tire business. The automotive market, as we all know, is undergoing profound changes. Vehicles must uh, uh, meet the demands of consumers for more comfortable, safer, and more technological vehicles. Regulatory changes such as emission standards and crash tests are becoming increasingly stringent. As a result, the vehicles are getting bigger and heavier. In addition uh, to these constraints, uh, we have tires that have to be uh, fitted to heavier vehicles. This means bigger brakes to be able to brake efficiently and larger wheels as uh, well, and larger tires that uh, require uh, more raw materials. And we know that it is important to adapt uh, to the urgency of climate uh, change. And this uh, shows that uh, all-season tires are gaining a lot of ground. And then the electric uh, vehicles that uh, require uh, for us to adapt in terms of noise, energy, efficiency, and resistance to abrasion. In this new landscape, a major imperative is added and dominates all the others, the reduction of the environmental impact of our products. Now, in order to reduce the environmental footprint of tires, the industry is subject to many injunctions from many stakeholders, including citizens, consumers, manufacturers, uh, regulators, uh, competitors, or investors. And we must also combine this with our own ambitions for progress. These injunctions cover the need to uh, limit and fight against global warming, the depletion of natural and fossil resources, and also the protection of biodiversity. And uh, in addition to this, we have levers, such as, for example, increasing recyclability, the quantities of recycled or biosourced materials, increasing the lifespan of products or their repairability, increasing their energy efficiency, reducing particle emissions, and recovering uh, products at uh, the end of their life cycle. Now, that all these levers are known, I imagine it's easy? Well, no, unfortunately not. That would be too easy. Progress on one front can actually lead to a setback on another. This is what we call the impact transfer. Let me give you an example, the rate of renewable or recycled materials. Today, we could actually make a tire with 100% renewable or recycled materials, and yet, its energy efficiency performance or lifespan would be significantly reduced. So this wouldn't be uh, a progress in terms of uh, our footprint. Uh, and it would be the same thing with a, a tread that would have much more recycled materials, uh, but with low performance recycling technologies. So this means that we have to boost our performance in uh, this respect. The challenge is to manage the complexity of these uh, uh, multifaceted uh, issues and identify the most important levers to effectively and significantly reduce the environmental footprint of our products while maintaining a balance between our three P pillars, profit, people, and planet. Now, Brigitte, how can we reconcile all these imperatives? And how does the group take into account its environmental footprint in its uh, choices and decisions? Now, wanting to reduce our environmental footprint means working on all aspects at once, not on uh, just a few taken separately. No, on all of them and at the same time in a global approach, a holistic approach, precisely to avoid the type of impact transfers that uh, Cyril has just mentioned. And I would uh, like to mention that uh, this is something we have to avoid, avoid because it involves improving something on one side, uh, but uh, uh, with uh, less performance uh, on the other side.
This means taking into account all possible environmental impacts, such as impacts on water, air, soil, pollution, extraction of fossil fuels, and so on, but also all the phases of the life cycle of our products and services, from the raw materials required to the end of their uh, life, including all the stages of manufacture, logistics, and use. So basically, from the cradle to the grave. The tool that will enable us to reach this is what we call the life cycle assessment. And we are systematically using it to uh, widespread our environmental impact assessments to all our products and services. As you can, as you can see uh, from uh, this example of the passenger car tire, the uh, usage of phase has the greatest impact on the environment ahead of the use of raw materials. Now, this uh, impact measurement uh, takes into account both carbon emissions and resources, for example. Yes, no less than 16 environmental impacts are assessed in total in the life cycle assessment, including the impact on global warming, for example, greenhouse gas emissions, and also on the use of natural resources. Is this analysis carried out at company level or product by product? Well, it's done by product. In fact, we should even say by product plus service. The proposal of a product only makes sense to meet a need, for example, to fulfill a function expected by the user. The analysis must, uh, therefore, take this function into account. Let me give you an example. If the function of a tire is to be able to drive a passenger car for 60,000 kilometers in Europe before it needs to be changed, and uh, you offer a tire with a wear life of 60,000 kilometers, then to carry out the life cycle analysis, uh, you would uh, have to consider four tires. But if you offer a tire with a wear life of only 30,000 kilometers, then eight tires and not four should be taken into account for this analysis. Now, you'll understand that this can significantly change the assessment of the environmental impacts it generates. Well, in fact, the genesis of a product is key. 80% of all environmental impacts are determined as early as the design stage. This is why we widespread the practice of this life cycle analysis in an eco-design approach that we also apply to all our new products and services. Now, as the use phase is an important part of the life cycle analysis, what are the uh, avenues to reduce its impact? Well, there are three levers to reduce the environmental footprint. First of all, rolling resistance. Rolling resistance is of the utmost importance as it directly affects uh, CO2 emissions of all uh, thermal and uh, electric vehicles. And Michelin is not a newcomer in this field. We invented low rolling resistance uh, tires more than 30 years ago. Since then, our relentless efforts to increase the energy efficiency of our products have enabled us to cut the rolling resistance of our tires by more than half. And this is very important because more than 30% of the impact of the tire is produced because of rolling resistance. Let me remind you that one in five full tanks is consumed by the tires because of rolling resistance. And on an electric vehicle, this plays a role twice, once when driving and also with uh, regenerative uh, uh, braking, the tires absorb part of the energy that should go back into the uh, battery and therefore plays a role in terms of autonomy. Therefore, the energy that is needed to make a journey. Now, after energy efficiency, what is the most important lever? Well, second one, longevity. And this is another advantage of mission tires and often one of the first reasons for our customers to choose a Michelin tire. And this is uh, something that is recognized by the industry, as you can see uh, on this uh, slide, with the ADAC uh, results published in 2023, the German Automobile Club. And the most important characteristic of a durable product is that it should last. And this longevity conditions the number of times that you have to replace your tire. Therefore, extract the materials, secure the tires, uh, uh, transport them, and so on. 
So longevity is also associated at uh, Michelin with very high level uh, of performance throughout the life of the product so that our customers can use their tires in complete safety until they wear out. And this longevity accounts for 20% of the tire's environmental footprint. The more energy efficient tires that last longer. Is there another way to limit the environmental impact of their use? Well, the third lever, because we did mention three uh, levers, wear particles. They account for almost 10% of the tire's environmental footprint. The amount of uh, uh, particle emissions is a true performance of the tire and is measured in uh, grams per 1,000 kilometers. This is a performance in which Michelin has been involved for many years in order to develop tires that emit as few particles as possible. The ADAC, the German uh, Automobile Club, published a study in March uh, 2022, which clearly shows Michelin's leadership in this uh, area compared to its uh, premium competitors. Michelin, on average, emits 28% less particles than its uh, premium competitors, which is uh, huge. So many factors have a uh, strong responsibility in the design of their tires because uh, it can vary from one to more than four uh, in the ratio between the best tires and the worst. For example, if we take into account this uh, study published by the ADAC on 100 tires and the result of uh, Michelin studies on more than 2,000 tires, uh, we come up with the following observation. Here you can see the quantity of particles emitted by four tires on a car that uh, covers 20,000 kilometers per year. The difference then goes from 1.6 kilos for Michelin tires per year, so the four uh, tires, uh, to 3.6 kilos for the average of the tires tested, but up to eight kilos for the least efficient uh, tires, which is enormous. And this is uh, why Michelin's, uh, Michelin is very much in favor of a threshold regulation that would allow the worst performing tires to be uh, taken out of the market everywhere in the world. This is the case of the proposed Euro 7 regulation in Europe, which uh, involves setting a threshold on tire particle emissions in Europe. All right, so the use uh, phase of the tire has a major impact on its environmental impact. I imagine that it's completely different uh, for uh, electric vehicle tires since the carbon emissions uh, are still much lower, right? Well, no, I still have to answer, uh, here again I have to answer no because the usage still represents more than 80%, even when we're talking about uh, electric vehicles because uh, to date energy is not uh, decarbonized enough and the tire contributes to absorbing, absorbing part of the energy of uh, the uh, uh, braking regenerative uh, braking. The electric vehicles also require larger tires because they're heavier and they use up more uh, material. And because of their mass, uh, they emit more particles uh, per kilometer uh, covered. I see that raw materials make up the second major impact of tires on the environment. What are the levers that we can actually activate? We will always need as much material to make a tire. Now here we're talking about the use of resources, i.e. the removal of the materials that we take from the planet. The first way to reduce this is obviously to use less material or to use it better so that, that it lasts uh, longer. This is what we call the frugality lever. So you can activate this, for example, by reducing the mass of tires or by increasing their life expectancy or by improving their retreadability or their repairability, i.e. their ability to uh, make several lives with the same original uh, carcass by only changing the worn tread. The second solution is to use materials that are either renewable, for example, natural materials that the earth can regenerate within a human lifetime or recycled. So here we're talking about recycled material, and basically this is what we mean by sustainable materials. So we're reducing our impact on raw materials, but does this result in a compromise and an increase on in the impact 
on the usage uh, phase, for example, because of a deterioration in performance? No, 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 no. Out of the question to reduce our tires' performance. In, uh, by 2022, we will have manufactured road-approved bus and car, and car tires with 58% and 45% sustainable materials. Uh, this means increases of plus 50% uh, and plus 100% respectively compared to current levels. And we've done this by maintaining the excellence of all their performance at the same level as the Michelin premium tires on the market today. Now, we've tested uh, these uh, tires on the road, and you have an example here of a bus uh, tire here with 58%. Uh, and we are extremely proud to have been honored for these uh, tires with the Environmental Achievement of the Year Award at the Tire Tech uh, Expo in March 2023, uh, given by the industry. You know that whenever we're talking about tire performance, obviously it's going to have an impact on their usage of face, and therefore it's going to have an impact on their environmental uh, footprint. And you'll have uh, understood that. For us, this is totally out of the question. And this, even though the challenge is a huge, because in order to reach 100% sustainable materials in the tires, uh, we will have to be able to succeed in doing so by changing the 200 or so raw materials that are currently a fossil origin that make them up. Is it realistic to imagine a tire made of 100% sustainable materials? Well, you see, in 2022, we already designed tires with 50% sustainable materials with the same premium performance levels as current Michelin tires on the market. So yes, we are very confident, and we will be able to make tires at much higher rates in the course of this decade, 60%, 70%, and even more in the following ones, up to 100% by 2050. But then the most difficult thing will certainly be as it is very often the case when we're looking uh, for these, uh, this absolute uh, goal, to go and find the last few percent, and above all, to go and find them for all our tires. But we are extremely confident. And generally speaking, over the whole life uh, cycle, are you also confident? We can significantly reduce and on a very large scale, the environmental footprint of our products and services on a large scale without uh, degrading the essential performance for which Michelin is known. Life cycle analysis guides us on our priorities, and these are already Michelin's areas of expertise and leadership, rolling resistance, longevity, uh, particle emissions, work on renewable and recycled materials. All of this is already well underway. And finally, we're working in parallel to continue to make our uh, plants more sustainable. This is also the case for uh, logistics. We're determined to transport less, transport uh, better, or transport differently. We are fully confident in our ability to achieve our goals, and I hope that uh, you now share this confidence with us. Thank you very much for your attention.